I think we're going to do a second round with uh, Senator Baker. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, um, I'd like to give uh, Professor Howe an opportunity to answer the question that I had originally asked and was answered uh, by uh, the witness here in the room with us. Uh, but first of all, uh, I recall a, a book called Judicial Power and the Canadian Democracy. Do you recall that? Uh, the name Paul Howe was attached to the authorship. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm surprised that you would hesitate to comment on things pertaining to the um, pertaining to the uh, process of bringing charges uh, and so on under the Canada Elections Act. I congratulate you, by the way, for that book. You must have written it when you were 10 years old. Uh, the, um, uh, because it was way back, I think, in 1999 or 2000 that that book appeared on the, on the scene. Uh, so let me ask you about uh, compelling uh, uh, testimony uh, as far as the uh, commissioner is concerned. What are your opinions on the fact that, that this has been brought up so forcefully by the witnesses before this committee that without it, it prevents a conclusion, a just conclusion to the robocall matter and to other similar matters that may arise in the future? Well, I'm, I'm amazed that you remember that, that book. Uh, and I just to provide a bit more on my background, very briefly, um, not so much in the area of judicial politics. I was an editor of that book, and I worked with Peter Russell, one of Canada's most uh, preeminent political scientists, uh, on that. Um, but I, uh, so my expertise is not so much in that area. It's more in the area of political participation and youth voter participation. However, uh, that said, uh, I have listened to the testimony of others who have said it's very important to have this power, uh, and I'm, persu I'm persuaded by their, their reasoning and their arguments. I mean, I think in the end that when we have these kind of issues that may be undermining confidence in the electoral process, it's important that we able to be able to investigate them thoroughly, efficiently, quickly, uh, in order to retain Canadian confidence in that process. So I would agree with the idea that uh, testimony should be, uh, be able to be compelled. Thank you. Question, Senator Moore. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I want to uh, follow up on that uh, question by Senator Baker, because uh, uh, Professor Bange, you say you support the splitting up of the authorities, uh, whereby the uh, Commission of Canada Elections will be the investigative body. Now, with regard to the and it's interesting too, you know, your, your comment here about we've had and continue to have dedicated chief electoral officers, but that does not necessarily mean they are right all the time. And that may apply to the current CEO, and it may well apply to the immediate past in view of his comments with regard to this uh, compelling uh, matter and the robocalls, past and future, if they continue. Under this legislation, the commissioner of Canada elections, he or she, does not have the power to compel a person to appear to testify. Records are only kept for one year, and the records do not include the phone number of the person contacted, which is pretty fundamental. So I don't see how that commissioner, I don't see how she or he could do their job with those kind of uh, obstructions or uh, you know, omissions in authority. So do you have any comment on that? And I'll ask both of you that because this is Certainly. very important. Certainly. You know, we've heard from Justice Mosley, you know, in the past, fraud was committed. Not enough to upturn the election, he said, but fraud was committed, and this is the reason why. So I'd, I'd like to have some comments from each of you on that. Certainly. I'd like to say uh, separate the two issues. We can separate the office of the Commissioner of Canada elections, and, but we can also supplement his powers. 
for example, record keeping and phone numbers and so on, which is, as you say, completely logical. So I don't think the two need to be tied together. We can separate and move and house the Commissioner of Chief of Elections, uh, Commissioner of County Elections, and give him certain powers that are necessary to do his job. We don't need to leave him under the leadership of the CEO and as, and as well. So I, I think they're two somewhat different issues. That, that, that could be. Uh, Would that be okay? That, that, that could be, but I think that the commissioner should have the authorities. This is very fundamental. This is not something we wait till we get down the road and, and the same thing repeats itself that already Certainly. happened, right? So we know what happened. We know we can stop it. Why don't we put those stops in this bill? I, I'm going to – it could be that I have a faulty understanding in this area. But my understanding is, is that a, a court subpoena can compel my testimony, my records, and so on. I'm not clear why that has to be done at a prior stage to a court setting. That you, may be over, overly simplistic, but I'm not clear on why that's essential. You don't think that the commissioner of – I don't – I don't know. You don't know. Because I do know that I can – my records and a great deal can be subpoenaed at a court – in a court I hearing. I know that. Yeah. In, so in, I'm in, not – In usual proceedings, that's right. So I'm not sure why this should be an unusual – an unusual okay. proceeding. Sure, okay. Perhaps if there is an answer to that, I'd like to know, because I haven't read well, that myself. Well, you should really think about this, because it's pretty important. Okay. Mr. Professor Howe? Uh, I think for me the litmus test would be to have to look at what happened in, in 2011 and, and try to establish a system that would simply allow the Commissioner of Elections to, if you like, to get to the bottom of these kinds of things uh, and that the bill should be looked at through that, through that lens. Uh, now, so consequently, I, I'm no expert in that specific aspect of things, but that's the litmus test that I would use and we've heard from the people who are the experts, the people who actually administer and try to carry out these investigations and they've indicated that uh, these kinds of powers would be not necessary and essential to that end, and therefore I would support that, uh, that, that perspective. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Professor Binge, I would like to come back to the, I should say, the underlying ID on, in, in your two pages and a half brief. The perception I have is that you compare the Canadian, the UK, the US model, and you say, oh, there is a difference in terms of status of the CEO with those two countries, so we should line up Canada on those, those two countries. Well, it seems to me that, as uh, there was an expression that now with the animal protection rules we cannot uh, use anymore in public, but I will res risk it. <laughs> there are many ways to skin a cat. Absolutely. Uh, and there are many ways to reach democracy. Yes. Uh, as you said, I mean, UK has <laughs> rules that protect its democracy that are not that we don't find in Canada and so much so in the United States. There are rules in, in the states that I would not certainly like to import in Canada mm -hmm. and I think that would give you thousands mm -hmm. of examples. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that one can say, oh, this model is perfect, let's use that model because two other out of three have it, we should have it as the third one. I, unless our model is proved to be wrong. Yes. In other words, if, for instance, the fact that we have put the uh, finance campaign over, oversight under the CEO produce wrong results, that it is bad monitoring, that is a lack of uh, follow-up on the donation, there's an incapacity to monitor the system, well, I would say there's something wrong in the system. But I would not, as a principle, wanted to say, oh, let's line up our system to those ones because uh, you know, they are bigger or they are older or whatever. And it's not clear in your uh, brief for which reasons we should be dismantling, you know, the CEO, because I think you have a problem with the power of, this, of the CEO as it stands now. It seems that you, you want to strip it, you know. Let's put it this there, let's put it that there, and then we'll be able that we have a CEO that will be still effective. I think that a system as a philosophy and as principles and involve on the basis of its history. Absolutely. And along the line, there is a capacity to review it, like the Barbeau Commission or Lorty Commission. It's good, as you said yourself, after five years, 
better to go back and see what's the result, especially when you move on new grounds like party financing. I think Professor Hao has mentioned it, or some other witness around the table have mentioned that our system of party financing revision, fundamental revision, is still very young. Uh, you know, as a system, the limits on 5,000 is recent and so on. And we've changed it from 5,000 to 1,000. Now we, in, we increase it on, on, on 1,500, and then we open it to solicitate the, mem the new members. You know, there's always a way of adjusting it. But to adopt a, a position as you seem to adopt in your brief, unless I'm badly read in between the lines, I think you have a problem with the status of the CEO as it stands now. I think you think there is too, mu too much there, but you don't show why it is wrong. I couldn't do that. You understand, in five the, minutes. You understand my point? You understand <laughs> I, I, why I, understand I think your brief lacks of some convincing power, in my opinion, to say yes, she's right. I could have made it longer, but I was under strict instructions to make it five minutes. Uh, first thing, my reference to the U.S. and U.K. Uh, is not to say we have to change to be like them. All, my only point in saying that was that we have, that we have uh, party finance oversight that is different from and it is headed by a single appointed person rather than a body of commissioners. It was simply to point out that we are an outlier, not to say that we should change simply for the sake of change. Mm -hmm. That's the first question. The second question is, um, I, in reading very closely the investigations of uh, the Can uh, Commissioner of Canada election in the past six years or so, I did have some concerns that uh, there was a veering towards partisanship. For example, in one of the cases uh, uh, that had to do with uh, whether the uh, chief electoral officer, I believe, if I'm recalling correctly, uh, would allow certain expenses of the Conservative Party. Uh, it came out in testimony that the Liberal Party and the New Democratic Party had done exactly the same thing, but the Chief Electoral Officer had sought only to further the investigation uh, with the Conservative Party. He argued uh, that he was doing that in order to level the playing field. However, if justice is to, be, if justice is to occur and be even-handed, then my contention is if all parties violated that section of the Canada Elections Act, all should have been prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is too much discretionary power. I'm going to have to jump in there. And, uh, and thank you, uh, Ms. Bench and uh, Professor Howe for your, uh, your assistance with our uh, deliberations on the C-23. Very much appreciated. Thank you for being here. And uh, members, we'll recess briefly and hopefully start uh, right at 4 o'clock with our next uh, panel.